For me, I personally feel like I'm most confident when I trust in my abilities and I feel super prepared for the day, whether that's on or off the field. So for me, showing up to the field when my body's prepared, my mind's prepared, I'm like excited for practice or excited for the game. That's when I feel like I'm most confident in myself and trying new things on the field and not worrying about when I make mistakes. And so today I'm going to kind of talk about like things we can do to help enhance that. Okay. Trying to scroll through. Okay. I know no one's participating. Does anyone want to share why the brain doesn't like negative surprises? Why they think? Okay. I'll just tell you. Basically your brain's job is to protect itself from danger. So you want to kind of know what's going on, keep it safe, avoid the danger. Um, and when you have uncertainty, your brain goes into like threat mode, which on the field obviously is like not the best feeling. Like I'm sure you guys have had that feeling of like, don't pass me the ball or, oh my God, I just missed a breakaway. Like I, I don't want to try again because I'm going to mess up like that type of situation. Um, but our brain can continue to do really hard things if we give it a heads up, like I said, being prepared. So I'm going to teach you guys about this thing called the triple piece. I share this with everyone. I share it with my teammates. I'm about to be 30 years old and I practice it myself. So basically the triple P strategy is predict, plan, practice. And to start, you start with predict. So in games, it's really helpful and practice too, or just throughout your day, like at school or whatever, to predict a few setbacks that you might experience. And sometimes people might have heard of this as a like worst case scenario exercise of like, okay, I'm really stressed about my math test. Worst case scenario, I get a 70 and I'm disappointing myself. Um, and that's a setback you might experience on the field. It might be something like, oh, we have a game today. And I, my setback is that I give the ball away a lot or something like that. I'm sure you guys can relate to like having a setback in life, obviously. Um, okay. Here are some examples. Giving away the ball, coach and teammates get frustrated with you. You lose a game. You have a bad first touch. Like these are setbacks that happen in sport. So what you do, what is helpful is you plan, um, how to prepare for those setbacks with you and your teammates. And that could be strong, positive body language, breathing, reminding yourself to grow from it or say like next play or recover on the field as your plan of action when the setback happens. So if I, let's say I'm playing in a game and I give the ball away and someone goes and scores and I feel terrible about myself and we're losing and this and that, I can take a breath and I can say, all right, next play. And then I can, like the next bullet says, control the controllables, give my best effort. And like I said, with the worst case scenario exercise, when this setback happens, I'm going to do this. So you kind of have a plan for when the setback happens on the field, you have a plan. And then the next part is you obviously put it into practice when it happens. So you remind yourself once at practice that you are prepared for the setbacks and you are ready to manage your plan. And before trainings and games, you predict the setbacks and then how you will push through. And then you practice that action. And when I talk about this, a lot of people are kind of like, okay, well, why, why are you like saying you're going to make mistakes and like already having that negativity? And it's almost just like, okay, well, I don't think any human being that tries to go for their goals in life is going to be perfect every single day. And so there's bound to be something that doesn't go perfectly for me in a practice or a game, obviously. And so that's, instead of being like, I stink at soccer, I'm not going to do well today. It's more like, no, I'm a great soccer player. I'm going to show up, be ready to have fun. But if I give the ball away because I'm taking a risk to try to play a really good pass, if I, if I'm not successful, my plan is to take a deep breath, remind myself that the next play matters and then move forward from there. And so that's kind of the difference versus like, I stink. I'm not good enough. It's like, no, no, I'm great. But if I make this mistake, this is how I'm going to kind of move on from it quickly. Because like I said about our brains trying to protect from danger, if you don't move on quickly, then your brain starts to kind of spiral on the field, which I'm sure some of you have experienced where you make the first mistake and then you start to make the second and the third and you're like, oh my gosh, this is just not my day. So it kind of just helps you like not have that spiral. Um, I want to also talk about, I kind of came up with these, a fourth and fifth P in addition to the triple P's, perspective and purpose. Does anyone, I know no one wants to share. Does anyone want to share in the chat at least so you can type about what perspective is? anyone at all because I'm kind of like breezing through this I'm actually like almost done because we've had minimal <laughs> we've had a lot of shy girls anyone want to explain what that means to them or if they have perspective I'll give you guys a couple seconds if not I can talk about it because I think it's really important I 
Okay. I'll just talk. Okay. When you play soccer, obviously it's your life. For most people, they're like, I want to go on and play in college or play professionally or whatever. It's like we practice every day and sometimes it gets super consuming. And with school as well, we're just like, okay, I need to get the best grades. I need to be the best student and I need to be in the best classes and like all this pressure. Sometimes with soccer and school, I try to remind people to zoom out and have a different perspective, more of like a big picture perspective of like, okay, this math test matters today, but it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of your life. It's like, do your best today, but the math test doesn't determine your worth or who who you're going to become in a few years or anything like that. Same with the soccer game. The soccer game just seems super important in the moment, and it is. And we always want to do our best and control what we can and give the most effort. But if we don't win that day, it's not going to matter down the road. It, it's it's. I've been playing for 26 years. I can't remember the wins and the losses of any of my games. Like I just remember my friends and trying to get better. Um, so that's why I think it's really important for people to have that perspective and be able to come home from a bad day at school or feeling like you might have like missed your goal or felt failure at practice and be like, okay, well, I should lean into my other identities of who I am and stay like mentally just remove myself from a soccer player and remind myself that I'm a daughter and a friend. And for some of you, like a sister, or you have a dog or all these other hobbies that you like to do that to me is zooming out and having perspective, which is really, really important. And the fifth P for me is purpose. Why are we willing to play soccer? What is the purpose? What is that extra fuel that gets you to push through? And it's probably not something that all of you even think about. You're like, yeah, I just go to soccer because like my parents tell me, or I'm on the zoom because like my parents made me and I don't want to be here. And it's, it's really interesting to think when days are harder at school or soccer, it's like, why do you do what you do? It's because you have goals or dreams or you love it, or it's a stepping stone to get you to something that you want to be at. And so when I have tough days professionally here in Chicago, I'm just kind of like, oh gosh, like, what is my purpose? Why do I do this? Oh yeah. I play soccer because I love it still. I love for me personally, I love focusing on improvement. I love getting together with my teammates every day and trying to reach a goal. I love like that. I could be my super goofy self on the field and then be super competitive in an environment. And I love being outside and having that freedom with the ball at my feet. Like there's so many reasons why I play and I love playing. And I think as you get older, it's really important for you guys to start to recognize like, why do you even play? Because that's the thing that's going to drive you on your harder days and help you be super confident in what you're doing. And I think for school too, it's almost just like, what's motivating you? Do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be a teacher? Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And if you don't know, that's okay. But it's those little things and your purpose of why are, why am I even studying? I don't feel like it, or I'm not having the best day. I did bad in my math test. What's going to keep me going? And if you have that extra motivating factor, it's really, really, really helpful. 